Hello, so this was a video um, I asked what people wanted to see out of a couple of Geiger counters and this was the most requested one, strangely. So this is a strange old sort of um, Geiger counter design to sort of sell to people who wanted to prospect for uranium. Um, I found it on UK eBay, obviously it's an American product and it was just one where I was lucky enough that a lot of people didn't bid on it. So it's Precision Radiation Instruments Incorporated, model 107B Professional. So Often you see this one called the Professional Geiger Counter, but it's actually called the Precision you know, Radiation Instrument Model 107B. I think ORAU, or one of the Fallout Museum type websites, has a page on this. If I can find it when I'm editing the video together, I'll put the, just it, that in the description. I think there's a couple of variants of this. But basically this was a Geiger Counter that was marketed you know, for people thinking they could put a lot of money down on the Geiger Counter, um, find some uranium, and uh, strike it rich, so I'm definitely going to dub uranium fever over a bit of this video because that's exactly what this was for. So, um, we'll get the box open, so nothing on the inside of the lid, it's just, you know, on the outside got this same stuff written on every side. And the bottom of the box says, made by Precision Instruments Inc, Los Angeles, California, world's largest manufacturer of um, portable radiation instruments. So let's assume that's true. I don't know if it actually was or not. So you get quite a little bit in the box. So you get the Geiger counter itself, which sadly I cannot power because it's one that used loads of different obsolete battery types. Um, but fundamentally it's like a chunkier CDV700. Um, um, it's a very similar design, although the probe goes on the side of this, as you can see. Um, it's heavier than the CDV, even without any batteries in it. And most importantly, it's got a smaller range. It has the 110 and 100 multipliers, but you can probably see from there, hopefully, if I hold that up to the camera at the right angle, it only goes to um, 2 on there, not 5. So basically 0 to um, 0.2, or you know, 0 0.2 millirontgen per hour, or millirontgen per hour, um, rontgen even. Um, then it goes to, on the 10 scale, 0 to 2 millirontgen per hour, and on the 100 scale, 0 to 20 millirontgen per hour. Whereas, of course, if you were using the um, CDV, uh, CDV700, it would go to 50 millirontgen per hour. So there's that. So that would be a cap for your headphone jack, I believe, under there. That would be a calibration thing. The light would flash as and when you're getting a reading. Um, so it doesn't show you counts per minute or counts per second or anything, but that would flash every time it gets a count. So you could work out the count if you were bored enough wanted to do that. So your probe sits here. So let's just get the probe off of the housing. There we go. It's a bit... So one they're probably going to get me tetanus. Um, but it's basically one that is gamma when it's closed, you can open it for beta. So to open it, you undo this little screw here, which doesn't really want to undo. And then you should be able to twist that round. There we go. And then that's open for beta radiation. So you might be able to see there's kind of like a plasticky bake-like foil thing on there that I think due to age has sort of crumbled away. There you go. That's, that's how that works. So that's all you have on that side there. So that just nestles nicely on there. That's one of the only things I don't like so much of the CDV is um, I think it would be better with the CDV 700s if they had actually, you know, done the um, mount on the side there like this one. Uh, so there's that. So if we open up the thing now, if you want to see what the labels say on the top, it says the model 107B professional Geiger counter. That's the calibration adjustment. And it says precision uh, radiation instruments in Los Angeles, 16, California. So let's open this up there we go and then you can see the inside of it so there's a loose cable here no idea what that would have attached to probably something to have a battery um, there's a fair trade label there and as you can see that's the guts of your unit so most of it as you can probably see is all battery compartments for how many old batteries it needed but there's your electronics so um you know making that what you will no idea if this still works as i said i haven't powered it Interestingly, rather than really old vacuum tubes, it's got just sort of very chunky looking resistors. There's a couple of vacuum tubes on there, but I'm used to these pretty old ones, you know, being um, loads and loads and loads of um, big vacuum tubes. But there you go, for a 1950s Geiger counter, this is certainly a lot more portable than the British uh, contamination meter from the same period. So, there's that. So that's, let's put that neatly back in there. Um, and then seal it. So the case works the same way as the CDV um, 700s, you know, with the clasps like that. So it comes with a nice strap, much higher quality strap than the um, CDV sort of nylon-y sort of plastic strap. So there's that. That's quite nice. 
And then the coolest bit in here, well, I won't forget the headphones just to show you quickly. Here are some headphones, uh, higher quality headphones as well than the CDVs. I've not tried plugging this in to anything, but you know, it might still work. So there you go. Um, there's that. And most interestingly, and this is when I'll, I'll just let you flick through some of this, hopefully it's not copyrighted. Um, I'll show you some of the big manual that came for it. The, uh, well, not so much a manual for the Geiger, but a manual for prospecting for uranium. So, prospecting for uranium published by the United States Atomic Energy Commission and the United States Geological Survey, revised October 1951. So, there you go. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to stake me some government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down Well, I had a talk with the AEC And they brought out some maps that looked good to me And one showed me a spot he said he knowed So I straddled my jeep and headed down the road I reckon I drove about a hundred miles Down a bumpy road out through the wilds When all of a sudden I bounced to a stop At the foot of a mountain, didn't have no top Uranium fever has done and got me down Uranium fever is spreading all around With a Geiger counter in my hand Yeah, there we go, so... That's quite interesting, the last page, because it shows variations of different Geiger counters. Um, obviously some of them bigger than others, but yeah. This um, would have been quite, um, you know, a very well, a very good professional unit for when this was, um, you know, made. Um, it's much smaller and more compact than that than the US Radiax, but these are apparently very expensive. These were um, supposedly in old US dollars um, from around the 1950s when these came out. 300 odd US dollars to buy. Um, in, if you use an inflation calculator, that's over a thousand dollars today. So, um, very expensive for what it was, but lovely. Um, pleased I managed to get one of these in such good condition. I said I just got on eBay a while ago and nobody else was bidding on it. So apologies if the framing hasn't been great for this video. It's quite hard with the spotlight and everything to get this stuff totally in frame while sitting here and sort of handling the components. But let's put it all back in its box and you can then see it going back in. Um, but basically, yeah, you have your headphones in a little cardboard box here, um, which hopefully still work. As I said, all this is in really good condition. It was obviously never used. It was just one that somebody had somewhere and then sold on. But um... Oh, and before I forget, there is something very interesting, which I nearly did forget. There's a check source included with it. So on here, ooh, if I get it back in frame, there's a little disc. So if we get that disc out, you just bend the metal bit out and then this lifts out. As you can see, it's like a plastic bake light sort of disc. However, um, it's more interesting from that side. I don't know if you can actually work out why it is. I can't, because obviously the manual isn't specific to this one. But if we put the GQ on it, um, there we go. You can see it's ticking away. And if I get that to flip up, it will um, go to a couple of microsieverts on this. It's not a very uh, active source, but again, it's quite an old Geiger counter. I don't know what was originally in it. Um, there's obviously bear in mind it was originally a milli Rontgen um, display, uh, so if we look at the MRH display on here, if I can get it to flick to that, uh, hopefully, yeah, so maybe when this was new I guess it would have been one to two milli Rontgen, so I guess the idea with it was um, that you probably, you know, on the times ten scale you could see the needle stop somewhere in there which is obviously quite good for a check source if it overloads on the lowest sensitivity setting doesn't go to the highest one and on the middle one sort of goes somewhere up on the dial so let's put that back in there and let's put this all back together again so we'll get the bit like that out there so that probably will sit mostly quite neatly there uh, get this in here like that put the cable in probably just on top like that and that might fit in that box actually um, like that box there, like there, then put the book back in the side, because I obviously want to keep this in as pristine as original condition as possible, which is why I don't store this in a storage box, it sits, um, you know, in its own place so it doesn't get crushed. Uh, hopefully you can tuck the wire under there slightly, yeah, there we go. And then it should all be ready to put the box lid back down on top of it, there we go. It doesn't sit all that flush, but it's all in there. So there you go, the professional Geiger counter. Um, I'll put a link in the page for it. As I said, I can't really do much with it because um, 
you know, it's one that requires about 100 volts of old obsolete batteries, but it is a very interesting design, and, you know, it's kind of interesting how this is a commercial one, but you can see elements of the CDV series in it, all the old US Army Radiacs. Um, it's kind of like a weird hybrid, in all honesty, between the Radiacs and the um, CDVs of how the case works, how the wand sits on it, and all that sort of stuff. But it wouldn't surprise me if potentially precision radiation instruments, or if they had any other names, if they were owned by Victorine or somebody like that, probably um, did work on some of the other instruments, because, you know, generally with all those sort of things, it'll, the contracts to make those sort of civil defence or military equipment goes to whoever has the infrastructure to do it. So that wouldn't surprise me, but there you go. Um, the professional model 107B Geiger counter, very interesting bit of history, but pretty useless, obviously, because, you know, as much as I think it's been looked after and would probably still work, very small operating range compared to something like this, you know, and um, requires very heavy old batteries to work. 